Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a health plan enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome back to the second video for L Indonesia. Thank you so much for featuring me. In today's video, I'm going to talk about five Diva health plans. And these are health plans that require a lot of attention. They're a little bit finicky and you need to get the care sort of cor correct. It's perfect for us as we observe a lockdown in our homes during these times. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you to the species as well as the care for them. The first one in my hand here is the Tradescantia nanook. And Tradescantias are actually quite an easy plant family to keep. However, I find that the nanook is actually very, very difficult only because they require very, very bright indirect light, but also you have to really control the moisture level really well in the soil. They can live in any kinds of uh, soil mix. However, they do need to dry out between watering. Uh, they're very, very prone to rot. So the stem would just rot off if you overwater it and it would just die off. So this plant actually had as one um, main stem cutting originally, and I kept cutting and propagating it and uh, simply putting ba it back into the soil to let it uh, bush out like this. So as you can see, uh, over time, it's gonna keep growing and giving me a fuller plant. Uh, so yeah, my only warning for this is do not let it dry out too much. Um, in fact, you can squeeze one of the older leaves if it feels limp and um, it, it folds easily, then we said it's time to water it. However, if it feels full, it feels firm and, and succulent-like, do not water it because they will not forgive you if you overwater it. And the next plant is the maiden hair fern. It's actually very, very difficult to keep alive. I've had to try many times. So if your uh, maiden hair fern actually uh, dies back, uh, don't throw the pot away. It's probably not dead yet. Um, or if you have a damaged uh, fern that is beyond uh, recognition anymore, just cut it off. Uh, give it two to three months, it'll grow back. So this was dyed into a stump, so it's basically an empty pot, but now it's given me uh, so many uh, new growths. Uh, so the trick with them is that they do need bright and dark light, and their stems um, are so beautiful. It's, uh, they look like metal, sorry, uh, metal wires. <laughs> And they actually break off very easily. So if something falls on it or if there's a strong wind, it's just gonna break off. And if it breaks off, um, the leaf is done. I can see one here that has uh, twisted off. And yeah, that's done. That, that whole front is, is gone. And uh, you also need to keep them moist the whole time. This means that you need to water it once or twice a day. Never, ever, ever let the roots dry out. If you forget to water it, it's, it's gonna sacrifice some of the fronts. It's gonna turn brown and crispy and it's gonna dry off. This is why this is a very difficult house plant to have around, but it's perfect for us now as we are uh, at home most of the time. And also they come in various shapes and sizes and the leaves come in um, variegated forms as well. So I do uh, recommend for you to check out the different versions of the maiden hair fern. Okay, so the next plant is the string of hearts. And uh, th this is the green form, the regular version, and this is the variegated form. So. They're super hard to keep alive, especially in our humidity. Um, they're actually considered a succulent, so they cannot be watered very often, and they won't forgive you if you overwater it. Um, for the, the variegated, it's so beautiful because you have the white on the, on the leaves, and then they come with these uh, pink rims uh, along the edges. And the way that you would care for them is actually to give them a dappled direct sunlight. They not full sun, but some direct sunlight, probably in the morning or in the evening or under a, sh a shade. So they cannot be overwatered as well. I have it in a very, very uh, airy soil mix, uh, very chunky, so I water it very frequently. Um, most of the, you who buy this plant, they're gonna come in a, a very, uh, like a regular house plant soil, and you don't wanna water it very often. And one way for you to check the watering is to just squeeze that old leaf. Uh, if it falls easily, uh, it's time to water it. If it, uh, it feels firm and full, do not do not water the plant. It will not it will die very quickly if you uh, overwater it. Another way that you can save it is to just propagate it. So I kept propagating my plants, even though my my plants actually keep dying. <laughs> Uh, but I have so many of these all over the house now because I kept propagating them. Uh, so that's one way for you to multiply them. But um, they actually can get huge, you can get like super long, viney, but uh, it takes time. And again, it takes a lot of uh, practice um, with this plant. So here's a Phytonia, and it's also known as nerve plant. And as you can see, the leaf texture looks like nerves. Uh, it's actually super stunning, it's beautiful. It doesn't get very big, so it's very good for um, small apartments or, or, or rooms. Um, however, 
<laughs> they also die very easily. And here's, here's why. They can rot very easily uh, and it will just turn into mush and fall off if you uh, kept the soil wet for too long. They do need to dry out between waterings. And also they will let you know um, the leaves will actually droop down uh, when it's time to water them. So uh, I highly recommend for you to water them only when the leaves look a little bit droop droopy. This means that you have to put this plant somewhere where you have to walk by very often, where you can check it out. Because if you forget it, you put it in like a corner where you're not paying attention, it's, it's gonna die. So this is the plant that really, really requires your vigilance and constant attention and care. Other than that, it can take a medium to bright in light. It can even take a little bit of a, a lower light situation. However, with lower light, you do want to water it less. Again, with this plant, you really probably have to kill a few before you get the hang of it. It's truly a very difficult house plant to, to have, but uh, very rewarding nonetheless because of its beauty. And this one's actually flowering for me. <laughs> it's super cute. Okay, so the last diva plant is this fiddly thing. Uh, it enjoyed uh, five minutes of fame on Pinterest and Instagram about, let's say, two to three years ago, and everybody wanted to have one of these. Uh, they're actually truly beautiful. This one is a small leaf uh, version, and they come in a big leaf version, which is what a lot of you are probably familiar with. Um, they also come in this rare variegated version, and it's so stunning. The markings and the variegation and the veins are so beautiful on that specimen. However, they're very, very difficult to care for, so listen up. They do need bright, bright indirect light to survive and some dappled direct sunlight is good for them. Uh, they need their soil to dry out completely between waterings. But if you overwater them, they're going to have some yellowing leaves that fall off. They're very, very prone to pests. A lot of uh, scale, mealybugs, uh, spider mice like to attack them, so you need to be on top of them. And when you place them somewhere where they're happy, do not move them. Do not touch them, they don't like to be touched, they don't like to be brushed against, uh, they don't like to be looked at, so you just gonna <laughs> leave them alone. They're divas that way. Uh, and if you give them the right conditions, they will grow really well for you. All right, so that's my five diva house plants that are not easy to care for and require a little bit more attention and care. Um, they're truly beautiful to have around, so if you want to challenge yourself uh, with, <laughs> with these plants, uh, good luck. And do DM me if you have any questions about plant care and propagations. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. Bye!